it's quite a uh, thrilling twist, twists and turns everywhere. Yeah, it's great that, you know, like you said, you're getting all these, all these uh, great awards from film festivals and all that as well. Um, you know, I think that's, you know, and I think even during, during the pandemic, it seems like a lot of these film festivals are going online in order to, um, in order to be able to show some of the films or, or whatever as well. I mean, you know, that gives you a little bit more exposure in terms of your audience, right? Well, look, I mean, you know, with, with the pandemic and everything and, and all the, all the festivals online, I mean, we, we pretty much got rejected by every big one, you know, the five big ones. And I naively decided to try my luck with them, you know. So, you know, TIFF and CAN and, and all that, I'm like, I went in there knowing that we're, we're never, we're never going to get in. But, you know, just, why not? Um, you know, maybe the pandemic changed something. But, I mean, I knew that this is not that type of calibre of film. But having said that, I got, I, when, you know, the rejections to festivals do come, come in, you know, you kind of, you know, as a, every filmmaker does, you, know, you kind of take it personally. But then my wife said something really interesting. She goes, well, this year, what is the difference between you getting into Cannes and you getting into a Bob's Film Festival down, you know, down the street? And I'm like, I looked at her, I'm like, well, what do you mean by that? She goes, they're all online. There's no prestige there. You don't have to wear a suit. You don't have to wear a tuxedo to go to these things anymore. It's like someone could watch your film in Cannes in their underwear, in their living room. The same person could be doing the same thing at this local film festival, there's no, the prestige is gone. You know, there's not, there's no, there's no validity now to festivals this year. And I thought, you know what? She's actually right. Because I'm like, what's, what's the difference here? What's the difference? So I, I started going for the more mid tier ones, you know, and um, we, we started doing, you know, fairly well. Um, our last one that we won was best thriller film at um, the Queen Palm uh, Film Festival in Palm Springs. I'm very, very excited about that one. Um, that one to to me was our biggest one because obviously I've I've entered my two shorts into that and you know I, I never got to this this round before where it was you know not just a monthly winner but the actual annual winner so um, you know ho hopefully hopefully you know um, we can get into some homegrown film festivals here in Australia and again an Australian audience really the Australian market really doesn't know what to do with this film we've we've exhausted all our avenues here which is why I've kept the rights I don't know if the subject matter is too taboo for them or something or maybe it's not culturally significant enough but yeah i'm having a hard time in australia with this one but hopefully maybe some festival runs might change people's mind and um get it appreciated by a home audience but yeah festival wins are always good uh but they were always a more, more of an afterthought uh for it uh, i you know i've attended sundance and i i kind of you know have to say that for the most part, um, Sundance itself has gone pretty much Hollywood. A lot of them are, or, or any budgets, anything more than maybe one or two million dollars, if that, you know. And I kind of feel that some of the top film festivals, I think, are just, you know, it used to be that festivals were for those people that wanted to get their, got one, the, the, the uh, underdog that wanted to get their stuff out. And it, it just seems like those top five seem to just, to just now work for Hollywood. They don't look for the independent filmmaker. I think some of these other festivals are starting to, to fill in those gaps. Some of these mid mid tier ones as well. I mean, yeah. I mean, the LA the LA Film Festival is no joke. Um, you know, they've they've done a, done some quality work as well. Montreal is really really good too. I've heard many good things about that. So I think that things are going to get kind of interesting coming up. Uh, you know, especially with what's been going on. I mean, obviously Sundance isn't you know isn't going to be in attendance. And, um, you know, things are, are shifting a little bit in terms of that as well. And to have an audience to be able to be internationally, be able to watch it. I mean, you're releasing it here in the United States. And I think that it's going to get, get, gain a lot of traction here in the United States. So, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see kind of where the next couple of years go in terms of where film is and, uh, you know, what what yeah. uh, what exposure. So. It's 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 great to be able to see that opportunity for you and, and to sing and I'm I'm really looking forward to watching it once uh, once it comes on demand. Yeah, look, I mean, obviously, you know, um, you know, people people are waiting for it, you know, and it's it's surprising to me because it's a it's a it's a small Aussie film, you know, it's, it's shot on it's not a shoestring budget, but it's shot on a budget that is, you know, you can't buy a nice car for it, you know, <laughs> you know, it, it's it's that kind of budget. But yeah, look, I, and I think I think um, Gravitas have done a really good job with that because they obviously they're marketing it well, and and um, yeah, they, they they truly are a, a filmmaker's distributor. They really work well with filmmakers. 
um, and look after them. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see where it goes. Um, I know that you introduced me at the very start as um, having directed my first feature film, The Ninja. So when I put a disclaimer there, I actually wasn't the director on that. Um, I, was, I was almost like a, a co-technical director advisor, so it's, it's only a title. This is truly my first feature film. So it's my debut uh, feature film where I had creative control over it, creative input and things like that. So th that's why I'm really excited about this one, just to get it to an audience. Again, it's a genre that's hard to sell. It's a genre that's hard to make people to watch, but I think people do like thrillers and um, it's still there, that, that, that wanting to escape from reality, especially in these, in these times. But um, yeah, look, let me know what you think. I I'd love to hear your, your thoughts on it. As a, uh, you're a fellow filmmaker as well, um, you know, you'd be looking at it and know exactly the challenges and things that would have to go into making scenes. And yeah, um, I could spend hours talking about some of the stuff that happened behind the scenes, you know, raining. And we've got some really, really annoying birds in Australia that just don't shut up in the middle of a take. Uh, they just decide that when the cameras are rolling, that's when they're going to do their thing. Um, so we've got just outtakes of us waiting around for the birds to stop talking yeah, it was it was it was things like that. But um, I'm glad it's done. I'm glad it's finished. I'm I'm really ready to tackle something bigger now. Yeah, I think I, really I think I had to. Yeah, I had to handle um, trains and semis and yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. Uh, I, I, I I'm very familiar. I'm very familiar with that as well. So yeah, yeah. Things happen on the set. And you you know <coughs> that sometimes you don't realize and all that as well. So um, yeah, yeah. it's kind of crazy. Anything else? I'm, in, anything else coming up for you? Well, well, my friend, I've got a massive pile of scripts to read through. Obviously, we want to do something next that is a bit more easily marketable. We want to do possibly something that, um, you know, get, get a few actors that are really up and coming but from the States. We really, we really want to move out of Australia and just do something in, in the States uh, for that kind of market. But obviously, the way things are going at the moment, it's, I'm only able to read scripts at the moment because there's no way travel or production is coming back anytime soon um, in my opinion <laughs> yeah i think uh, california is going to be pretty much pretty much uh well they're shooting some stuff in in, in in los angeles right now but i know that they're shooting some stuff up in vancouver right now they're shooting mm -hmm. some stuff you know maybe up in canada for a little bit um but um you know yeah it's still kind of some you know you know a good portion of the production is still not uh up and running up here so yeah, yeah. it's going to time for uh things to kind of settle out but you know they're just trying to get enough and just enough content so they can uh keep everything going while everything starts to open up so fingers crossed on that as well and yeah. you know, if you end up being in california you're only like maybe six hours away from us in vegas so uh, i love vegas i was there i was there two years ago at the uh, action on action film festival oh awesome yeah you like it up here what was that did you like it up here Oh, it's my, I love Vegas. I've been there twice now. So, you know, the, the last time I took the actress from our short film, uh, we came back with a ton of awards for our action short film, which is great. Um, it was an experience. Um, I love Vegas. I've always had. Well, that's great to hear. Maybe you'll be able to get up here once you, uh, once you move production up here as well. And, and again, congratulations on all success. Can have any social media out there? Yes. Yeah, so everyone can follow us on, on our Facebook on Prima Lux Films. And also our Instagram, which is Prima Lux Films. We're always, you know, got BTS and stuff going on, keeping everyone up to date with our projects. But yeah, we've got some really, really cool stuff coming up um, in terms of short films. Um, we're going back a bit to our action roots. So we've got some really cool action films coming up, possibly a sequel to one of our shorts. So yeah, stay tuned for that one. Oh, well, side, uh, side question on that as well. I mean, I had worked with the Artemis Film Festival for a couple of years um, and they work with a lot of the action, the action, female action stars on there. It seems like there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, female stunt workers from Australia and New Zealand. Do you, have you seen a lot of that and have you worked with a couple? Uh, well, uh, our lead actress from our last short film, um, Adele, we, we actually, um, I think we actually won one of the films, uh, one of the categories of the Artemis Film Festival. Look it up. The film's called Night Shift. And it, yeah, we, she just just watched that film knowing that she had absolutely no fight training or no martial arts experience whatsoever. And we spent three months training her for four nights a week, every single day, training, 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 to the point where I reckon she can double for 
anyone now. Um, she's, you know, she's fantastic. Have a, have a look at it. I'll send you the, the link for it. But yeah, massive stunt community here. And again, going back to working with someone like Richard Norton, who, who work, works on um, things like Suicide Squad and um, Ghost in the Shell. And, uh, you know, he was really, really impressed with, with some of the stuff that we were doing. Um, so, yeah, I've, I've met a few. I've met a few of them. And, uh, yeah, that, that, that'll... That festival actually is fantastic because it's it's one of the only ones that really cater to that target audience, that, that demographic. And um, yeah, I've got huge respect for them. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can, I can, I can tell as well. So I look forward to some more of your action stuff once it comes out as well. Yeah, and um, yeah, with that, I mean, you know, thanks a lot for joining us. I know a little bit early. Actually, actually, it's not relatively early there in, in Australia, but. But thanks for taking some time out, and uh, hopefully everything kind of opens up, and we get to see more of your stuff coming up. No worries. Stay in touch. Appreciate your time. You guys can follow us on social media at SWIV, at SWIV on Twitter, and somewhere in Vegas on Facebook. You can also follow us on Instagram at SWIV Podcast. That's at SWIV Podcast. You guys can subscribe to us on any of your podcast platforms, including Uh, iTunes, as well as Stitcher Radio, and wherever you can get your podcast. You can even request Alexa to play the latest episode of Somewhere in Vegas as well. You guys can also check us out on the iHeartRadio app as well. We drop episodes every Monday and Wednesday, so you guys can definitely check out some of this stuff. And you can go to uh, uh, Spreaker.com, that's Spreaker.com, and you guys can check out old episodes of the podcast as well. We thank everybody for joining us. We'll be back next time for Somewhere in Vegas.